The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. S&Ps kick things off up 36 points. NASDAQ 100 up 126 right now. The Dow up 245. We start things in positive territory. And I was talking about my subscribers yesterday, folks. And I sent them a note yesterday morning talking about this 40-40 area. And pretty interesting in terms of where we get up to overnight, man. Where did we get up to? 40, 40, 25. We put things back. Just looking at basically a this is an hourly chart. Just kind of cherry picking where I got this area, folks. It's kind of the consolidation area. You got back there on March 21st. You got back there as well on March 22nd. And there's a couple areas that you can take this in terms of where you go, but it's just a natural area on this chart, man, that you come up to. We're facing some resistance, the resistance from March 21st, from March 22nd. And yeah, we come up to that area overnight. And we see where we trade today with S&Ps up 37 points. You get the NASDAQ 100 up more than 1% right now. The Dow up three quarters percent right now. And you got the Russell up by 1% as well. Bitcoin up another thousand right near the highs again. 28,470 in Bitcoin. Crude up another dollar. 7421. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. We'll talk some Forex. We'll talk some crude oil. Teddy's got a webinar, folks, coming up in April. You can check out his Tiger Forex report. You get 30 days money-back guarantee. He'll have a webinar for subscribers on April 19th. We'll talk about that when we talk to Teddy at 40 past the hour. Stay tuned for that one. Gold contract. The volatility continues. We're rolling over on contracts here. So we got gold, negative $9 on the session at 1981. Silver right now off about nine pennies at 2332. And you jump to notes and bonds. The volatility persists. Let's put it back to a five-minute chart to see the action this morning, folks. And remarkable, you're seeing lower price, higher yield. We're talking about a 10-year, now above 3.6%. Now above 3.6%. Look at the pullback, man, that we just had. You spiked to 117.01. And just like that, in five days, which includes a weekend, okay? So from Friday's spike of 117, you're back three full points on the 10 year right now sitting at 114.08 and yeah back to a five minute chart it's not stopping man we just dropped from 114.28 at about six in the morning that's when i was up already looking at the market right two hours you drop by 20 ticks right now boy you think the volatility is over in this market folks just pay attention to notes and bonds because the market just can't figure out what's going on right now there's too much volatility too much unknown coming down the line when you talk about inflation, you talk about a little bit of a banking scare, but just staying on inflation, right? The market can't figure out, man, what the Fed's going to do just yet. And even the Fed doesn't know. You heard the Fed, right? If the financial crisis doesn't tighten things up, then the Fed will tighten things up. They don't know the impact it's going to have just yet. We're all going to find out the impact that this financial crisis in terms of the bank crisis is going to have. We don't know yet. And we're going to find out in the next two to three months. We'll, we'll lighten up uh, a lot in terms of what we find out as we go into the next two Fed meetings right now. But volatility in notes and bonds, to say the least, we jump over to the VIX. Not too much volatility in the VIX, though, man. You know, with the type of moves we're getting in this market, folks, to see a VIX under 20, I think is underpriced in this market, to put it lightly. We're sitting at 1927 right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the action we got. How about some of the earnings, man? Lululemon, you talk about a rocket ship, man. Lulu, up, what's that, $50 right now? Yeah, $50. You're going to jump more than 15% on their numbers. And yeah, bringing over the article for Lumen. Lulu, holiday quarter sales surge. Looks like Lulu was a big-time uh, holiday gift. They also beat estimates on... 2023 revenue, full year profit, and uh, most importantly of all, usually they issue upbeat guidance for the new fiscal year. The numbers, 440 versus 426 revenue, they beat by 2.77 versus 2.7. Yeah, how about this one? <laughs> I mean, check out these. The Vancouver-based athletic apparel retailer said, total comparable sales for the fourth quarter increased by 27 percent 
also called same store sales. The metric included sales from stores open continuously for 12 months. We know that's how it works, right? Same store sales, comparable sales, 27%. We believe that this is one of the few companies in the space that has a very long pathway for growth. And it's also a very highly visible one. That's uh, one managing director at Raymond James, Rick Patel. Nonetheless, strong numbers, man. In December, Lulu said inventories at the end of the third quarter were up 85% year over year. The company said Tuesday that as of the end of 2022, inventories were up only 50%. So big numbers from Lulu, man, over there on their numbers. And they're going to get quite a lift up to 370. We put this thing on a little bit of a longer term time frame. And I bring it up because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be coming into this area that we spiked to in November before you really sold off. So this morning, we're going to test that area. And you're going to pop to about 370. That's right to back to the highs that we had November 7th. You got up to a high of 386 in Lulu on that run it had right into their numbers in December before they disappointed, bringing you back to really this trajectory. And looks like maybe it was just a one-off quarter as they're going to be back to 370, still off the 485. But boy, you took about, talk about long-term, folks. We're going to open at 370. And that's almost the natural area, right? You put this thing on a monthly, and listen, they're going to be around. But you're going to be bumping up against an area that's basically been somewhat resistance outside of the acceleration in Lulu at the end of 2021. You know, what did we get to? September of 2020, we got almost a 400. You see the bodies of the candles, okay, 376 or so is where the body of that candle begins in September of 2020. Uh, where's this one? 375 is the top of that candle where you begin. You got 370 on the dot is the end of this candle in November of 2020. You got 373 is the top of this candle in December of 2020, let alone you get back to where we were 2022 and of course where we were at the end of 2021. But nonetheless, man, strong numbers from Lulu and they just keep crushing it in terms of putting up strong numbers in an area, man, where they are still getting quite a pretty penny for their clothing. Some of the other equities that are moving before we jump into the first break. Yeah, how about it? We got Carnival shares catching a little bit of a lift. You talk about volatility following their numbers on Monday down to 868. Right now you're back to 959. They get uh, Susquehanna upgraded Carnival to positive from neutral. Carnival has ample liquidity and should be able to improve its unit margins this year. Now you take a look at Carnival, man. This one's always an interesting one, okay? Maybe this is the breakout, folks. That's why I bring it up. Don't normally kick off the program covering Carnival shares and the first segment of the program. But boy, this thing's been in quite a downtrend channel. I've talked about in this, this on the program before. We're going to come into the first break. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hanks after the first break. But we're going to talk about this one a little bit longer because check it out, folks. I've talked about this. Look at this channel line, man. And if you are breaking out of this channel line, it might be a big one. And today we're going to jump to 960. That's going to put you over the line of that channel line. We'll see how we go. Stay tuned, folks. Coming back with our man, Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up almost 1%, hitting those pre-market highs. We're sitting right at basically 4,040. Make it 4,041 as we make a new pre-market high in the S&Ps, up 1% on the dot. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network with Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the whole team. They got outstanding guests, folks. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. You're talking about defined risk using options. Kevin Hinks, we got positive markets across the board this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, let's call yesterday what it was. Now, pretty big yawner in terms of the overall market movement. Didn't much. They're stronger today. And, you know, Tommy, I was just talking with Oliver Rennick, and I think this is that time of the year, a time of the quarter, that you have to really – understand where you are on the calendar right you're in spring you're, you're 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 starting to get into a time of the year where a month from now between now and next month you're going to get a lot of high profile high tech earnings that have had pretty incredible runs up till now and you know the month of march was pretty interesting the yields came down 10-year yield came down the dollar came down the that's like with the banking crisis, it's come down back below 20. Crude oil, even though it seems like it's higher, it's actually down for the month time because we started the month around 80. So the fact that it's 74 now, even though because it went to 64, 74 is still down for the month. So this is still a pretty positive environment to be in. But, Tommy, first quarter earnings are going to tell a lot about how this market go, goes forward. And some of these names, Meta, some of these other big, high, you know, high high cap tech names, they've had pretty good runs here in, into this first quarter. So it's going to get interesting here. You know, you made some great points yesterday to the same tune, talking about some of those tech companies. Man, I was checking out Meta. I was thinking about Meta yesterday a lot, Kevin, after you mentioned it, because, boy, that is quite a chart, man. The run that it has had, you know, kind of em emblematic of, of some of the tech companies and the runs that they've had. But Meta, most of all, um, just from the demise they had. And we come into, like you mentioned, the end of March. We're coming into the next earnings season. I think Met in particular, I was jumping around on the Thinkorswim platform, April 26th. So we have a little bit of time until some of these companies come out. You got yields jumping around like bonkers, man. Even this morning, since I woke up at, at 6 in the morning Eastern time, Kevin, we had the 10-year trade from 114.28. You're down 20 basis points, um, 20 ticks from where you were at. You're at 114.08. When I'm... The question is, right, so we come in, kind of a lull like you're talking about, and boy, we got some equity still with earnings, Lulu, Rocket, and higher today. But as a trader, it's kind of interesting because we've gotten so used to just an onslaught of economic data with the banks, uh, with the Federal Reserve, with the data we got for the month of February, and we're in a little bit of a lull right now as we come into that kind of next week or two or three i think we get non-farm payrolls does it start next friday yeah and then we get cpi the next following week after that 
But as a trader, Kevin, I try and find myself, what do you think is going to drive this market right now? I feel like we're sitting at some pretty lofty levels. As you mentioned, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of unknown and, and kind of volatility coming down the line. We got markets above 4,000. Bonds are trading with volatility that is just amazing, to put it lightly. Risk reward wise, as a trader, where do you see the risk reward negative or positive in this market? Because I find it hard, Kevin, to see a rapid increase to the upside right now. And this is my personal bias, man, and that's why I love asking these questions, versus just the volatility coming down the line with, and not even the banks anymore, let's just say that's okay, just dealing with everything we were dealing with three weeks ago, coming into where the Fed said inflation's still raising. Where, how do you, you know, rationalize that in your head as we kind of go into this period of a couple of weeks, really. Next Friday is the first time in my head that we're gonna get one of those mammoth data points for the jobs number. And what's that, nine days away from right now, man? That's almost eternity in this market right now. Well, uh, this Friday, we'll, we'll get personal income and outlays. That'll okay. give us another look at inflation. So even though we, we get GDP on Thursday, it'll be that third look at GDP, so it, I don't expect it to be as volatile, 2.7% on GDP, 1.4% on uh, per personal consumption expenditures. Uh, but income and outlays will give us a pretty good number to chew on by, for the end of the week. But obviously, Tommy, any time you're talking about non-farm payrolls, that's the number one data point of the month. Now, is there headline risk? every morning with banks yeah there is a little bit of head line risk it's dissipating but every day you're still worried about waking up with you know problems from banks but they seem to be dissipating that's why you've got a vix back below 20. um i think the fight against inflation is still there i think remember jerome powell put the target uh fed funds uh target at 5.125 percent that's higher than we are now. So any talk of pausing rates, that's not what Jerome Powell alluded to. He ticked his inflation. He ticked his uh, overall uh, look for the uh, economy up a couple ticks, uh, uh, up a tenth in each one. So I think there's a lot going on here, Tommy. And it's how does this all play out? How does the dust settle? Now you're going to get into first quarter earnings in two weeks. And yeah, Remember, traders should be looking out about 30 days. And in 30 days, you're going to get a lot of the banks, a lot of the high cap tech earnings coming out. So, yeah, there's still a lot to go on here. I still believe that this spring is going to be volatile. So even though the VIX is 19.4 right now, I think still that the VIX, that, that this market could stay volatile, Tommy. So uh, don't let one lazy day like we had <laughs> yesterday skew your opinion on this market. I still think there's a lot going on out there. I agree, man. I was sending out a note to my subscribers yesterday, and I was saying, man, volatility, and this is my opinion, not fact, folks, and we get to see it play out whether it happens or not. But, yeah, I imagine we got some volatility coming down the line, man. I was saying patience, folks. You know, don't think that you got to, you know, capitalize off one day because volatility is not going away. We got a lot of um, speed bumps to get over when you talk about the economy, earnings, inflation, et cetera. You mentioned the VIX, Kevin. I was going to, you know, kind of wrap it up with this. At a time when, you know, and the markets have definitely calmed down a little bit versus the volatility we saw when we had banks collapsing every other day, it seemed. But what do you think of the VIX, which you mentioned, pretty low in terms of kind of what's going on in this market right now in context. But especially, I think, you know, in terms of the volatility we're getting in notes and bonds, the market hasn't been quite reacting as much because they're just almost maybe normalizing after the volatility in the banking crisis. But what do you think of, you know, the VIX with, in my opinion, the volatility we're getting in notes and bonds is indicative of just like you're saying, we have some volatility coming down the line, folks, because when you got the tenure trading with this type of volatility, the market is just not sure where we're going to be. And with the VIX and the 19 handle, I see that as just like you're saying, man, maybe it's not quite pricing in the volatility that we see coming down the line. We got about 30 seconds, Kevin. What do you think about those relationships in particular? Well, what I would say is apples and oranges, right? The VIX, remember what the VIX is. VIX is a 30-day measurement of the implied volatility of the SPX. So that volatility might be down. <clears throat> the VIX on, on bonds and yields much mm -hmm. is probably much higher than that, as, yeah. as there's pretty good volatility in there. The volatility in the SPX, 
seems to be dissipating somewhat. So, yeah, you're right. It, it's two different stories right there, and, Tommy. And we get to see if the volatility in the S&P catches up. What are you guys talking about on the show, Kevin, at 12? Walmart. R8 with earnings coming out after the bell, and then Home Depot today. I love it. A little retail. Kevin, thanks so much on a busy morning, man. We'll be watching at 12 for Fast Market, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, brother. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Folks, check Building it out wealth well. trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an SP that opens up 40 points to the positive side. That's 1% on the positive, trading at 4,040. NASDAQ 100, you're off by 152 right now. Uh, excuse me, up by 152. The Dow up 260 right now. The Russell up by 16. And jumping around to some of the articles we had pulled up here to take a look at this morning. We'll kick it off with, uh, yeah, risk free. U.S. Treasuries came back to haunt investors and bankers who ignore the basics of interest rate risk, and there could be more surprises in store. This is uh, the big take from Bloomberg out there. When's that out? Yeah, technically last night, this morning. And folks, it's 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 just simple stuff, okay? In terms of discussing with friends this morning, just absolutely remarkable how this went down. Um, and yeah, you talk about losses, man. I've talked about this on the program before. Folks, look at this chart, man. All right, if you think that you know more than the market right now and that you see charts like this with unrealized losses pushing 620 
billion dollars right now. Those are unrealized losses on investment securities at FDIC insured institutions. These are FDIC insured institutions and you're talking about nearly $700 billion of unrealized gains that they're not gonna have to mark to market unless there's a run on their bank. I don't understand how anybody is keeping money in a bank over 250,000. Yes, you'll probably get your money back, but why would you risk it, man? You check out First Republic this morning. You spike up to $17 on Monday and the market says not so much. Even yesterday, you trade from 14 to 12.50. Right now, we're basically fat, flat on First Republic at 13.50. Let's check out how some of the other banks are trading this morning. JP Morgan up a bit. Morgan Stanley up about 1% right now. Bank of America up about 1% with the market right now. Walmart shares trading higher by about 6 tenths percent right now. I think Kevin mentioned Restoration Hardware. Are they out with their numbers? Let's jump around. They sure are. They're going to be out with their numbers after the bell. So they got an $18 move in either direction is priced into their numbers. Excuse me. We just take a look at this week. If you want X, um, action through Friday, you're talking about, excuse me, about a $20 move priced into Restoration Hardware. Now, boy, this thing has had quite a run and quite a fall, right? You accelerate up to 744. You consolidate for an area. You break out of that consolidation area. Hindsight's always 2020, folks. But you want to keep your eye on those breakouts because sometimes the move can be much more larger than any of us imagine. And yeah, we don't need Fibonacci numbers on this chart. I mean, you can. Maybe the 786 is where you find a home in terms of a bid. If you're looking at restoration hardware, that's about 216. But boy, quite a quite a quite a fall off when you look at this stock is basically back to where you were prior to COVID. And think about it, folks. Think about running a company like Restoration Hardware where the whole world decides to outfit their home and what do you do your stock doesn't even go up from a period of three years prior to covid meanwhile it you, you might not ever run into a better three years in terms of people adapting their homes to spend more time there etc and the niche niche that they are in is high income expensive products and that's probably fair the most man they got a restoration hardware at international plaza in tampa folks first time i sh i saw it I thought it was a Hilton Hotel embedded into the International Plaza. International Plaza, beautiful uh, mall in Tampa. And I literally thought it was a Hilton Hotel because it was so beautiful from, from the outside. No, it's a furniture store, restoration hardware. Nonetheless, they got their earnings after the bell tonight and you're looking at about a $20 move priced in either direction. All right, I'm gonna jump to this article. Um, just theoretical a little bit. Elon gets some play, of course, as he usually does. But yeah, this is going to start becoming a big deal here. So you got Elon and other AI experts calling for a pause in the technology's development. Uh, the appeal causes tension among AI stakeholders amid concern over the pace of advancement. We're getting to the point, folks. Uh, Cyberdyne, right? Cyberdyne. Um, if you're not familiar, Terminator, Cyberdyne, right? Cyberdyne, I believe. It's, it's an interesting one to take a look at, man, but you start talking about the conversations you can have and the intelligence of computers and the danger that it represents. I mean, we're at a very early stage in terms of just the, the danger right now is misinformation, right? The danger right now is that you're interacting with a computer that talks like a human and that maybe you might think that everything it says is 100% accurate and that's gonna be a problem because it's not to say the least. But some of what they talk about here is a moratorium on six months or more would give the industry time to set safety standards for AI design and head off potential harms of the riskiest AI technologies. I mean, we've all been thinking about this one since Terminator, man. And it's interesting when you think about there's probably one area, right? And this isn't like the computers take over the world tomorrow, but there's a line. And once you cross that line, that computers could be dangerous, there's like no going back. And that's kind of how it, it went with Terminator, right? It's pretty amazing to talk about there. Um, so they, they have, we've reached the point where these systems are smart enough that they can be used in ways that are dangerous for society. And that is the director of the University of Montreal's Montreal Institute for Learning Algorithms said in an interview, and we don't yet understand. And that's, I think, the, the key part, right? 
Uh, these concerns and the recommendation for a pause were laid out in a letter titled Pause Giant AI Experiments, an open letter coordinated by a nonprofit Future for Life Institute. And here's the battle, man, because, you know, they're a nonprofit. The companies who like to make profits, they're not going to want to pause, man. But the ad, the letter was signed by Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. Well, he's not running Apple anymore, man, and he's given Apple a lot of grief. Uh, about things that they're doing over the last few years, but nonetheless, he is in there. So this is like the beginning of this playing out constantly. You're going to see a constant battle for making sure that we have regulations in there, et cetera. And folks, regulations get a bad rap all the time, but we're seeing how they play out right now, okay? Uh, Chairman Powell takes a lot of heat. The Fed takes a lot of heat for Silicon Valley Bank, for signature okay these banks collapsing but we do this over and over in history okay we are not proactive at all i mean same thing happens with flooding right in terms of just constant we don't upgrade the levees in new orleans and meanwhile we cost ourselves god knows how many billions of dollars much more money than if we had been proactive now whether we should have done that or not okay but it happens over and over new york etc over and over so what you have happening is, is that to be proactive, they put rules in place for the banks that said any bank above $50 billion needs to be regulated by the Fed. Because guess what, man? We saw what happened. The big banks got out of whack. We had to come in and save them. Folks, that was like 15 years ago. Well, they didn't give it more than a decade, and they were already back in there in Congress loosening up the regulations, saying, you know what, maybe we should, you know, lower the uh up the threshold to 250 billion because you know what do we really need to regulate these banks from 50 to 250 billion they're probably not all that important so here's the part of this equation right you see the risk to everybody when you loosen up the regulation okay this is always the battle what, what was the argument to loosen the regulation jobs right job killing regulations right job killing regulations Folks, it's the easiest shtick in the world, okay? You can argue it left and right 12 times to Tuesday, okay? But guess what? The reward for lessening the regulation on those banks was not worth the risk. And we're seeing it play out. You're going to see the battle in AI. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll be coming back, talking some Forex, talking some crude, talking a webinar coming up next month. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets up about 1%. S&P up 39 points right now, trading at 4,040. And it's time to jump over and talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report every week. He puts out a new issue Monday morning. He puts out updates throughout the week when warranted, folks. Please check it out if you haven't. Like all the newsletters we do, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's basically risk-free. You get it for 29 days. If you don't like it, you can cancel. You get a money-back guarantee. Head on over to the newsletter tab. You click on the Tiger Forex report. You guys and there? Coming up, coming up in a few weeks, we have a webinar, Wednesday, April 19th, with Mr. Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk to him a little bit about this, talking about the second quarter, market forecast webinar, and talk some markets. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. I'm doing all right. How about yourself, Tommy? Doing good. So I was just introducing you, bringing you on, um, talking about the Tiger Forex report, man. As I mentioned, people, please check it out on the front page of TFNN, folks, right under the newsletter tab. And if we could kick things off, Teddy, I know you're going to be putting together a webinar for subscribers mm -hmm. coming up in a few weeks on Wednesday, April 19th. I've got the information up here um, for the viewers. If you could just talk a little bit about what you'll be talking about in that webinar coming up on the 19th of April. All right. Well, it's going to be a forecasting webinar for uh, quarter two. And as we move into the year, I mean, we have a uh, month end and quarter end coming up, uh, obviously, this week. So when we uh, go over to webinar, we're going to talk about the major influences. So we'll be talking about everything from what's going on with the central banks. You know, um, obviously, that's a very hot topic more now than it was just even a couple months ago. So and then also a lot of the other influencing markets that are going to be, you know, dominating the trends for the currencies. We have a lot of you know, geopolitical things that are going to really start to impact the dollar as well as other, uh, you know, commodity markets and things like that, that will have a lot of the currencies in a tizzy. I think that, you know, especially, you know, what we've been talking about the past few months, the divergence in currencies is becoming more evident. And I think that especially as we go into the second quarter, we're going to have some interesting price swings. And that's what the webinar is really going to be focused on is not the micro what's going to happen this week, like what we cover in the Tiger Forex report every Monday, um, but more about what's coming in the weeks in a couple months to come and what what you really need to watch out for because these are going to be the things that are going to really have pivot points for the market i would say most likely i'm excited for it man and as we've seen boy when this market pivots boy some of the moves can just be amazing to put it lightly and for those that aren't familiar teddy could you just talk to the listeners and viewers a little bit just about your history and how you got even into forex versus you know equities whatever it be i know you do candlesticks a lot as mm -hmm. well but um for those that haven't followed i know we've gone this through this before at least once or twice but how did you get into really forex the niche and i know it drives so much of what's going on right now especially but can you give us just a, a quick you know how you got into whether it's markets and then how that brought you to where you are right now with forex trading unlocked and um the forex markets in particular Sure, sure. Well, um, I've been in the market since I was a kid, literally. Uh, so, but when I first started out on the trading floor at the CBOE and then moving to the Merck, I was in the uh, equity pits. I was in the OEX and then I was in the S&P 500 pit. So, you know, I was dealing with the stock market every day, but on, obviously on a derivatives basis. And when you were on the trading floor, you know, you had all these boards around the pits, you know, surrounding the walls of the exchange. I mean, you could see the different quadrants and you're seeing, you know, everything from grains and oil and currencies and every you, you name it, every market on the 
under the sun is on these big boards. And I got to you know learn how there was a relationship between interest rates and the stock market, you know, because the bond pit and the S and P 500 pit were the two big monsters back then, you know. So and I would see how they make each other swing and how you watch the cash and stuff like that. And then I started to watch the currencies because I knew that you know the bonds influence the S and P's and vice versa, you know. But I knew that interest rates were a function of currencies, you know. And we had the currency futures at the Merck also, you know. So at that time there was no forex market when I first started on the floor. There was the interbank market. So you, unless you were a bank player, you, the only game in town was a few futures, you know. Like there was the D mark. There was no euro back then, you know, and stuff like that. Wild, but I did right? notice yeah. I did notice the swings um, that currencies had. They actively traded well. Um, they were more contained, like the S and P's is psychotic, you know. Um, whether there's news or no news, you know. Um, and the bonds, they could flatline, you know. I mean, the bonds. I, I like the bonds because they have the biggest range on a given day. Um, if you trade the euro dollars, you're looking at a three tick market, you know, most days, especially back then, you know. So I mean, whereas there, there was nothing to do there, you know. So the currencies, sure. I could see how they trended, and that was where I'm like, okay, especially because with, with futures, you have overnight risk. There wasn't 24 hour trading back in the early 90s you know it was just yeah. beginning you know so and that's how I got into currencies was knowing that you know I was safer on on a, whether I was long or short the market if I was right on the trend it was a safer trade you know your nice. risk wasn't as high and that's how I got into currencies I appreciate it and I ask you to go through it because it's pretty cool how Forex is related to everything man and you've been through it in terms of being in the equities man looking at bonds <laughs> looking at markets and I think it's so cool how with you know the Tiger Forex report man um, I don't trade Forex myself, but I love the information you put out, man, and I use that information when I'm looking at the markets, the Forex pairs, the currencies, the bonds, um, crude oil, and you've given us such an education over the years on how all of those combined to drive so many of the markets, especially right now. With that in mind, Teddy, where, where do you want to kick things off on this market, man? Notes and bonds have just been bonkers. Do you want to start kind of to, to some semblance there in mm -hmm. terms of where you see things maybe going? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, with the dollar, it's very mixed. But with the interest rates, we have a nice little pullback, you know, and I think that, you know, what we saw this recent rally was a corrective rally. The overall trend is bearish. I mean, the Fed's not going to stop raising rates, you know, regardless of what goes on in the economy right now, that pressure should remain. OK, so I view this as a currently as a correction. I think it was an exacerbated move because when it first started, that was when SVB first broke. At first, it was one bank. Don't worry about it. There's nothing to see here. Watch the birdie. Now we know it's a systemic banking crisis. There really is a big problem. You know, so it's the buy the rumor, sell the fact kind of thing. So the rumor was we bought the bonds. We had the correction because that's going against the trend. It was exacerbated because of the news. And now I think we're coming into that point where the market's like, OK, yeah, well, we really don't care about the news. We know there's a banking crisis, but the reality is rates are going higher. So and this is just a pause because, you know, the Fed is propping all these banks up. So since sure. they're paying their original prices, they're they're playing with the cash. They've already been having other central banks buy. They're not buying our debt. Now they're buying our debt, you know, and then also lending us back debt for cash. So it's the, the whole it's such a ridiculous loop of what's going on. And when the, it was a cash driven rally and flight to quality, well, the flight to quality is over because everybody the news is not new anymore. You know, so now. Yes. It's a matter of how are these central banks going to react. And now their hands are tied more than ever because they want to fight inflation, quote unquote, supposedly, and help prop up their own currencies. But they can't do that if they want to help the banking crisis and the Fed. Wild, right? You know? So, it, I mean, it is, I mean, man. I, yeah. it's, 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 it's so ridiculous, you know. So, I mean, what I, I have to say that we're going to stick to the trend, and that means that yields should go higher. You know, I, with, I think if you're someone who's in the process of, you know, either refinancing or purchasing a property, you're much luckier now than you were a month ago. And I sure. certainly wouldn't wait another month if you're, if you're actually going to pull the trigger because you're probably like going to. You know, and what about crude, Teddy? We got about 30 seconds, a little pop, man. We're up 10 bucks from the lows of 64 bucks. But as our man Kevin Hicks mm -hmm. was saying, we kicked off the month at about 80 bucks. What do you think of crude sure. at 74? I like where it's bounced up to as far as a target price. Now we're coming into where it was support for the market bef before. So the question is, if we sustain a trade where we're at now, we're bullish. If not, we're going to fall back into the range for a little while. Critical area, man. It makes sense. I got yep. that line on my chart. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you in the next couple weeks. Coming up to that webinar, April 19th. You have a great week. Sounds I'll talk good. to you next Wednesday, man. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got two generations of O'Briens right here. We got Edmund Thomas O'Brien the third and Edmund Thomas O'Brien the fourth. If you didn't know, my first name is actually Edmund. Edmund. That's right. We go by our middle name, Tom. And he growly. Roar. Tell him, Tommy. Roar. He loves dinosaurs, folks. He loves Disney. Uh, we're looking at the S&P here, Tommy. And yeah. We're rising above that 4040 area, folks. If you take a look at the uh, 618, we got talking about basically from the highs of February. You ballpark some of those highs. You could take the cherry picked high in terms of the high of February 2nd, but you take kind of the area of the lows that we chopped around at. And where are we coming into? Oh, don't mind. Yeah. He's a little tired. He's feeling a little under the weather, but he wanted to come on and say hello. Buy low, sell high. Tell him, Tommy. Yeah. That's my eye. Oh, yeah, we buying low, selling high. He's looking at his charts. That's my white. Is that yours? Tell him, you like dinosaurs? What do they do? Stomp. What do they do? Roar. Tell him, Tommy. Roar. Bubba. Oh, Bubba. He's, he's a little under the weather this morning, so we're going to get off the air. We're going to get him a little... A little drink. Uh, yeah, tell us about the NASDAQ, Tommy. What do you think? Because this thing's rocking, man. We got the NASDAQ up 172, 1.35% right now. 
quite the move, uh, especially quite the move. When you think about, right, we got rates spiking a bit, a little bit of a reprieve. You talk about movements, man, notes and bonds. You see that, Tommy? That's a 10-year. My goodness, right? My goodness. Yeah. You see the lights? Tell them. Oh. You gotta love life, folks. Kids, they keep you young. They remind you about the simple joys in life, folks. Life is beautiful. As my dad says, yesterday's gone, tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now? Uh, spend some time with your family, give them an extra hug, give them an extra kiss, uh, and remember how lucky you are to have them because it's it's awesome on a daily basis, huh? Yes. Oh, said, well, numbers. The numbers? Yeah, the numbers? I know, buddy, huh? No. Okay, we're gonna say bye to everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. To see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, buddy. Folks, thanks so much for starting the trading day. Our man Basil Chapman. He is coming up next. Markets up one percent. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Bye, everybody.